So today we're going to make some decorative animal skulls. Oh, sorry. Take three, action. Hi. Take four, action. Yeah. So um, a lot of people ask me if I had chickens when I was a, a kid. Uh, take five, action. Take Am I normal? Take six, action. Yeah. Take seven. Take six, seven. I was thinking of turning my um, apartment into a mental hospital too. Although I don't really have any qualifications, but I do have cable TV, which I find very therapeutic. What was that? Take eight, action. The passage of time is part of what I'm interested in. And like all of the imagery is really sentimental, which is a kind of a contrast with the regular mounted game on a wall that's like a deer or, you know, some of these wild animals that are like shot and killed and put on a wall. Great, now people are gonna like be on the website and make screens and then switch over to Picasso. Take 10. I, I wanna express the idea that the kids are older now, the horses are, are gone, the kids might be gone. Like there's, you know, the, everything's changed. This was like a moment in time and it was a, a long time ago. Ugh, don't lie to me. Take 11, take 12. Oh, there's no F word? No, what am I gonna say about the paintings? It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. Where are the cue cards? Seriously. 15, action. Should I show a little more skin? Is that better? I would say I definitely come from a feminist perspective. Take 15, action. Take 16. I'm drawing from the craft tradition um, with some of the elements in my work. The, all of the um, embellishment with the roses and other flowers. Um, sorry, I totally lost. What the fuck? I've got nothing going on. Take 16, I think. And there's definite ties between like my turning my, these objects into crafty, embellished, bejeweled objects and the feminist, feminist perspective. The whale is courageous, sort of, or it's wildness, it's, um, or an eagle. You know, the eagle has its, like, wild nature. Cut, sorry, fuck. I use horses and cows, I've done some cows and chickens. I use them partly because of their status. And I think putting the horns on them elevates them to higher status. You know, it's like, here they are, they're like more majestic with these horns. Also the horns are decorated also to, in a way that's sentimental and um, they're embellished and grand. Take 72. So I use a lot of animals that we eat, chickens mainly, but I've done some cows as well. That's not true. I actually just did one cow. It sounds like I'm having sex with cows. I feel like I can't do this anymore. It's kind of interesting, these rela this relationship we have with certain animals. I mean, you could be eating a hamburger with a deer skull above you as decoration, with a dog at your feet, and it's, we're all over the place, and it's kind of funny. And I, the chicken's very low on the totem pole. We breed them just to kill them and eat them, and putting horns on them, elevated their status to some degree. You know, it's like they became more grand. In my work, I, I kind of exploit sentimentality. I mean, I want people to have feelings about this animal and these people, but it's all an imagined, it's all a little imagined world. I'm not really a huge animal rights person. I don't know if that's the way my work is being read. I see my work more as a narrative it's just a, li a little story of a time and a place. Um, there's a, s a narrative that goes between these horses. And if you read the text, you can follow along. You can, the names are the same. The names of the children that own the horses show up on the horse. And with the smaller sculptures, there's names of the animal 
all of the horses actually, and all of the chickens have names on them as well. Um, you know, I, I sort of want the viewer to uh, feel like the loss of that animal, but not necessarily in a animal rights way, but more just connecting with the fact that this animal existed. Sometimes people don't, um, aren't even sure which animal it is, which kind of animal it is, you know, which is interesting. Because I also paint the portrait of the animal on the, on the skull. Oh, you should take that out because that just sounds obnoxious. Like I'm, I'm trying to create like an imaginary world um, with little. There's a little meaning there. I mean, I'm afraid of death. That's the name of this video. I'm afraid of death and afraid of having a double chin on a video <laughs> that records me. Yes, no. I love it. I love it. Okay. No, I love it. Because <laughs> I can't do this again, Heather. <laughs> like I feel like, like my work brushes up against the idea of, of death and loss, but with this pleasantness and this, I love that contrast. I think it's funny and interesting, and I hope people see that in my work. I want to come off as a little goofy and quirky. Oh, you <laughs> <laughs>